the the hotel manager came and said mr engineers in uh, outside you know outside the hotel and he he asked if he could see you so i i went running and i and, and we had loaded the car we are locked and loaded and good to go i run to mr engineer and said, hey uh, parok sa you know, how are you uh, he says where are you going i said i'm going to going back to india he said no no don't go stay back i said no what do you mean my family and and i just fired it up. so so i said no um we we got to um go he says come back i said from from where he said from the airport i said no what are you talking about mr he said no okay, you go go to india drop them and come back in a couple of days i said what for so he says you come to my home in manchester you be my guest and uh, we'll go and watch the india pakistan match together wow uh, you know you've been so closely connected to the game who was that one player or a few players who say you were really in awe of? like for my generation it was when color television came uh, in the 90s for us it was sachin we grew up on sachin who yeah. was yeah. someone you looked up to and you were like he's someone who inspires me I think Farouk Engineer, because he was a really feared wicketkeeper batsman. He he would have you know in the against the West Indies, a fearsome attack of the West Indies. He uh, he missed a century before lunch, which was a big thing back in the day during Test matches. Nobody would score a century in one session, you know. And he missed it by four runs. He was on the out strikers, and I don't think they were paying uh, paying attention to the scoreboard. But he could have got that record. Yeah. Back in the day, in the '60s, and he was, uh, you know, very flamboyant, and he was acrobatic wicketkeeper, and he was a hard-hitting batsman. He was part of the World Eleven uh, as 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 the wicketkeeper, as was as was my dear Bishan Bedi was in the World Eleven. Um, uh, so Bishan Bedi also, I was very very fond of Bishan Bedi, Farooq engineer. and and then then sunil gavaskar came along uh and and we we were great big huge fans i think my generation there would be no cricket lover who would say sunil gavaskar was not on their list uh he he was he was the ultimate the, the number one in the world the little the original little master sunil gavaskar uh, yeah. who else in world cricket i was extremely fond of later on i was extremely fond of uh Um, uh, Ian Botham, you know, Ian Botham in the seventies and the early eighties. I just liked his attitude. I liked his his uh, his, his attitude to the game, and it, it was extremely aggressive. But at the same time, very very sporting. He was friendly with the opposing team. He used to go for a drink with the opposing team. He had great relationships with the West Indian cricketers. He um, that he played for, played against, and with in Somerset. and he he had he was just a brave brave man it was called uh, one one series which he probably won uh, single handed was botham's ashes oh yes he, he was a captain for a match and a half and then he said i am enough of this nonsense allow me to play my game he handed over the captaincy to to mike greely and yes. suddenly what happened from a, from a follow on situation he gave me he, he uh, flayed the bowling of australia Turned it around, won the first match, won the series. It was called Botham's Ashes. I think that was eighty four, eighty one, eighty one. Yeah, I'm not good with numbers. Yeah, eighty one. Yeah, 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 eighty one. Correct. Um, so that from that moment on, uh, Botham became, you know, one of my my heroes. And also, you know, it's what you read about them. I read, um, I read a, a, a double uh, biography, which auto and bio. Uh, of him called a book called it sort of clicks and that inspired me in many ways to go the extra yard also I, yeah uh, that book is a lovely book it sort of clicks um who else in the in world cricket uh, would be one of my heroes uh, uh i kind of i used to love to i used to love greg chapel's batting uh very very stylish but when they, he he got his brother to bowl that underarm rubber to the to the west indians i kind of lost it i it just hurt me a lot that you know for a man of such immense talent and a team of such immense talent would resort to something like that it just just put me off uh but great batsman great chapel uh, and ian chapel trevor okay uh, but ian and greg were great batsmen sobers Absolutely, the, the greatest, the greatest ever. 
so but Absolutely. no argument uh, yeah coffee and wave richards so, so it, it won't stop so you have to stop me at some point yeah <laughs> I just actually wanted to show you something because you mentioned uh, Mr. Farooq Engineer, and I, although I've worked around for years, I've only met him once, and this is a caricature of his, uh, made oh, by yeah. Mr. Austin Coutinho, and I've got it signed by him. Oh it was boy! A lovely little interaction with him. I missed missed out on talking to him last year in Manchester when I was. There I was there with him. Oh, I I I, I was going to ask you. Last year in Manchester, I was there with him. Uh. Uh, so, so what happened was in a, um, um, we've, we've completed a film called Eighty uh, Three on the Eighty Three World Cup. I'm sure all of you were little babies that time. No, not even little babies. I know. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was a big turning point in the history of, in, of Indian cricket. Not alone Indian cricket, but also I think in Indian Indian attitude. We we started believing in ourselves as being. World beaters, and we didn't have that little inferiority complex. No, no, um, we are we are very nice people, and all that. You know, all that changed after that. Um, and uh, he was in the commentary box uh, for the eighty-three World Cup. He was the only Indian commentator with the BBC commentators who was there. Uh, so he covered all the Indian matches, and I was asked to play Farooq engineer in uh, Kabir Khan's eighty-three, which Ranveer uh, Singh plays Kapil Dev. So I said, you know, I just grabbed it. I said, I will only do this guest, this 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 role if uh, you tell me that we'll be shooting at Lords. Wow. <laughs> so Kabir Sankar, even if we don't have a scene with you in Lords, which there is, by the way, uh, we will fly you down so that we can do us, we can do something at Lords. And I went down. That time I'd gone four times to England uh, in a matter of a month. Went up and down for the games. The World Cup was being shot at that time, and uh, I shot at Lords. But before that, uh, I was with my family. We went for the India-South Africa match in Southampton. We drove back, and we were flying back to India. And uh, the hotel manager came and said, "Mr. Engineers, in, uh, outside, you know, outside the hotel." And he he asked if he could see you. So I I went running, and I and and we had loaded the car. We are locked and loaded and good to go. And we're late as usual for the airport. I run to Mr. Engineer. And say, hey, uh, Paroksa, you know, how are you? Uh, He says, "Where are you going?" I said, "I'm going to going back to India." He said, "No, no, don't go. Stay back." I said, "No, what do you mean? My family." And <laughs> I just fired it up. So, so I said, "No, um, we we got to um, go." He says, "Come back." I said, "From from where?" He said, "From the airport." I said, "No, what are you talking about?" He said, "He says, no, okay, you go go to India, drop them, and come back in a couple of days." I said, "What for?" So he says, "You come to my home in Manchester. You be my guest." And uh, we'll go and watch the India-Pakistan match together. Wow! <laughs> so I said, "Okay, it sounds good." I went and sat in the car, and I said, "Where were you? We'll be late." My wife was screaming. All of us, grandchildren, cousins, everybody, we all sitting in one van, you know. So my wife said, "So are you coming back?" I said, "What do you mean? I have to come back in three days." He says, "She says, yeah, do it. Come back in three days. Who wow. gets an opportunity? Yeah, who gets an opportunity to to go and live with your with your childhood hero?" I mean, imagine one of you if if you say that Dhoni is my Dhoni is my uh, my my cricketing hero, and thirty uh, years later, you know, he, he, for, he someone uh, Dhoni tells you, "Come and stay at my house." Would you not go? Come and stay yeah, at my house. We'll watch a match together, right? So I called up and said, uh, "Hey, Farooq sir." So he says, "Yeah." He says, "I'm coming." He's saying, "Yeah." What do you like? He said, "Biryani." So I took biryani with me to England, uh, and he's big foodie, right? Um, so I flew back in a few days, went, stayed, stayed with him. I was supposed to stay two nights. He said, he said, stay one more, stay one more, and we went and saw the match at Manchester from the balcony. It was the most amazing experience of my life, actually. Uh, after and and in, and in, and at the Old Trafford, he's there's a whole retinue walking behind him, you know. So I'm walking with people, and all the, uh, including Paul Allen, who played in the semi-finals, yes. was part of the committee, and they are welcoming Mr. Engineer this, Mr. Engineer that, and and then um, to see to see the respect he has over there uh, at the Lancashire Cricket County Club, and then of course in, after after we won the match, and there was a big bar over there, and we started singing songs. Just me, we were what eight, eight or ten of us over there in that the bar of the balcony. Uh, of the of the uh, what's the big room called the 
the long room uh, no 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 the upstairs on the balcony the, the the main the members the members the, the members lounge yeah so we were singing songs and the 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 bar the guys didn't want to go home and we had the most amazing time of course we went home and i'll never forget that night uh, uh, ever stayed uh, you know ever, ever i never forget that night 